evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, Mutual Don Lee brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. June, the traditional month of weddings. June, the month when almost every American knows someone, either relative or close friend, who goes on that happy march down the aisle. As you see the blushing bride and her bashful groom, your thoughts naturally turn to the future. Will these young people, starting off so bravely in life together, eventually own their own home, say a pleasant white cottage in the country, or the more sturdy red brick house of the city? They will if they follow this advice. Save money regularly through United States savings bonds. There's no better investment in the world. Savings bonds are both safe and profitable. In just ten years' time, they pay back four dollars for every three you put in. Now is the time to back your future. Save today for a happy tomorrow through United States Savings Bond. They are always conveniently available at banks, post offices, and on the payroll savings plan where you work. But now, the shadow. Today, by popular request, Blue Coal again brings you one of the most outstanding shadow dramatizations of all time. The exciting story called Death. In a minor key. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death in a Minor Key. Death in a minor key. (laughs) You know, to me, that expression brings back the memory of a series of weird, eerie musical notes in a minor key that had a tragic bearing on my life. It's funny, isn't it, how all of us recall a certain sound that we associate in our minds with a strange, indeterminate feeling of uneasiness or fear. Like... Yeah... Like the cry of a coyote as it's silhouetted against the night sky. Or the wild shriek of a siren as an ambulance catapults through the city's darkened streets. And then there's even the sound of a distant train whistle punctuating the evening stillness. Bringing with it that lost, empty sensation of being all alone in a strange, lonesome world around you. Huh. That's odd, I just happened to think. All of those sounds that I described are night sounds. I guess that does have significance, too. Because the night is... Well, night is a time for fear. And it was at night, too, that those notes in a minor key were heard. Faintly at first. Ever so faintly. Played on a strange instrument. Then as they came closer, you heard uneven, heavy-footed steps. The sounds are louder now. Footsteps nearer, 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 nearer. <laughs> well, I seem to be getting ahead of my story. It's one that I think will interest you, so if you'd like me to pass it on, suppose I start at the beginning. My name is Terry Mason. My mother and father died in an accident when I was 12, and I was brought up by an only uncle. My story really begins down in Santa Domingo, where I spent two years supervising one of the family plantations. Well, Santa Domingo was all right, but believe you me, I was a very happy guy when the day finally arrived for me to board a ship to return to the States. The main reason for that happiness was, uh, well, because I was in love. Yeah. Not only in love, but on my way to get married. The girl was Barbara Norton. So you can imagine how anxious I was for that boat to get to New York and get there fast. Well, I got to New York all right. And the following day in a little church downtown. Do you, Barbara Norton, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. 
I do. Yeah, it was a beautiful ceremony, I guess. But I wasn't the man who married Barbara Norton. What happened? Well, there were probably a dozen reasons. So let's just say that two years was too long for her to wait. Well, a thing like that's pretty tough to take. All my hopes and dreams of a future were wrapped up in Barbara. Then all of a sudden, boom, there's nothing. After she was gone, there was only one thing to do. Try to forget. To lose myself in bright lights, music, and the gay whirl of the city's night spots. When one place would close, I'd dig up another. My favorite hangout was the Sky Room. Of course, I know I shouldn't have gone there because everyone knew me. But I just liked the idea of kicking it around 40 stories above the ground. I never took a table, just sat at the bar and listened hazily to the jumble of conversation around me. Here to dance, Maru? Not yet, Lamont. I'm having too much fun just watching. Oh, uh, darling. Hmm? You see that young man sitting at the bar? You know, he's been staring at you for the past ten minutes. Hey, wait a minute. I believe I know him. Of course, that's young Terry Mason. Oh, for heaven's sake, I haven't seen him in years. Well, if he's a friend, ask him over. You mind? No, no, I, I, I wish you would. Terry! Hey, Terry! Yeah? Oh, Lamont! Come on over. If he can make it. Oop! He almost landed on that table. Hello, Terry. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> How are you, Lamont? Well, fine, thank you. Well, this is Miss Lane, Terry. How do you do? How are you, Terry? Sit down. All right. Oh, tell me, where have you been all these years? Hmm? Oh, Santa Domingo plantation stuff. Two years of it. Finally got fed up and came back, huh? Are you kidding? Well, what do you mean? You know why I came back. I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> hey, you see, Miss Lane, that's Cranston, always the gentleman. Well, I'll tell you, my friend, I came back to get married. But you want to know what happened? <laughs> I was jilted. Oh, that's a shame. There was I, you waiting at the church. Oh, come on, let's have a drink. Who was the girl? Barbara Norton. Oh. Barbara Norton? Yes, I know her. Nice kid, nice kid. Good to her parents. Woman of her word, too. <laughs> yeah, woman of her word. Well, just what happened, Terry? I was away too long. That's the story they give me. I was away too long. But that isn't the real story, not by a long shot. What do you mean, Terry? They're all working together on this thing. They're working against me. <laughs> Who's working together? My uncle, Barbara, and her father, Dr. Norton. I don't understand. Terry. My uncle controls my inheritance, Lamont. Today I learned that he and Dr. Norton were planning to confine me in the doctor's private sanitarium. What do you think of that? Well, now, maybe they're doing it for your own good. <laughs> oh, sure. Just like Barbara married somebody else for my own good. Oh, no. No, sir. They're all working together. They want that inheritance. And if they get me to that sanitarium, they know they'll have it. Where is this place, Terry? up the Hudson. It used to be our family home. Terry, I think you're putting too much stress on this whole thing. Lamont, you've got to believe me. If they can find me in that place, I'll never come out alive. Well, in spite of all I could do, they put me in the sanitarium the next day. It's for your own good, Terry, they kept telling me. Oh, yes. What they really meant was that it was for their own good. Well, I kept my eyes and ears open, waiting. Waiting for something to happen. And then, that very first night in the hall of the sanitarium, a sound was heard. Faintly at first. Ever so faintly. Then footsteps. Nearer. 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 <laughs> I rushed to the phone quickly. I knew that I had to call Lamont Cranston at once. He was the only one that I could turn to. The only one. Don't answer that, Lamont. I know it'll be someone who'll give an excuse for not taking me to the lecture. That, Margaret, will be the neatest trick of the week. No such luck. Uh, I'd better answer it. Oh. Hello. Yes. Oh. Yes, Terry. How are you? Where are you? Sanitarium. What? Murder. Are you sure? I see. Yes, I know where the place is. All right, Terry, I'll be right up. What's the trouble? It was Terry Mason. Someone's just been murdered at the sanitarium. Ooh. Come along, darling. We'll go up there at once. <laughs> You 
You know, Mr. Cranston, when you're first telling me that I'm thinking of my camp, the house up the Hudson, I am thinking of only of one house which is up the Hudson. And this house is not a house which I am fond of. Indeed, on account of bars which is on the window. Yes, I know, Shrevey. Turn left in this driveway. Uh, yes. Oh, Lamont, is that the sanitarium up there on the hill? Yes, darling. Gee, it's a grim-looking place, isn't it? Old stone walls, high turrets. Almost looks like a prison. The house to which I'm referring is a prison also, although it ain't the same house in it. You'd better stop here, sweetie. Uh, yes, sir. Why, aren't you going right up to the door? No, Terry will meet us at the cellar door. He doesn't want anyone to know we're coming. Do you really think that a murder's been committed here, darling? I don't know, Margot. The whole thing may be a wild goose chase. Young Terry's in a highly nervous condition, mm -hmm. but I do think it's worth an investigation. Uh, you wait here, Shrevey. Uh, and I'm keeping beside me my jack handle, just in case, just in case. <laughs> Come on, Not darling. Not a bad idea. Look. The whole place is shrouded in darkness. Well, it's quite late, you know. Yeah, but you'd think that... Come on. What's that? What? What are you talking about? Look. That cloaked figure disappearing into the shadows of the building. Yes. You see it? Yes, I see it, Margot. That looks very much like Terry's uncle. Oh, then you know him, then? Yes. Both he and Dr. Norton are old friends of mine. He's gone now. I wonder what he's doing here. Yeah. This must be the cellar door Terry mentioned. He should be right inside. Is that you, Lamar? Yes, I have Miss Lane with me. I see. Come in, both of you. Watch your step. Now follow me. Terry, what is all this? Still in the house. Perhaps even at this very minute, he's listening to our conversation. What murder? Who are you talking about? We'll stop here. Now, do you see that door? Yes. That leads to the operating room. In that room is the body of the woman who's been murdered. How do you know? They took her there a few minutes ago. Who? Who are they? My uncle and Dr. Norton. And that was Terry's uncle we saw. Yes. Look, Terry... How do you know that a murder has been committed? Well, I, I just know, that's all. Did you actually see it done? No, no, I didn't. Well, then. But I... I did hear something. Weird music in a minor key, accompanied by the uneven thump of a cripple walking. When the music reached a crescendo, the woman screamed. And then she was found dead. Who's the woman? An elderly patient here at the sanitarium. But who would kill her? What's the motive? I have a theory about that, too. In fact, it's more than a theory. That old lady who just died was a very wealthy woman. My uncle handles all of her investments. In fact, every one of them in this sanitarium is a person of wealth. And all of them are friends of my uncle and Dr. Norton. I'm not accusing them of murder, Tim. Why not? Why have they got me here? To get me out of the way, that's why. I'm just one of the hand-picked victims. But they're not getting me, do you no, hear me? No, 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 That's no, why Terry, I called you to Terry, help me. Take it easy. Margot, take, take Terry upstairs to his room. See that he takes something to make him sleep. No, I want to no, know. Okay. I want to know what that music was that I heard. Please, Terry. If you want me to help, you must go along with Margot. I want to investigate a few things here by myself. All right, all right. This way, Miss Lane. Up these stairs. Uh, just a minute. Come on, what are you going to do? I'm going to pay a visit to that operating room, Margot. As the shadow. <laughs> Examine the body completely, Doctor. Yes, and believe me, when the coroner arrives, he'll find nothing wrong. You're sure of that? Yes. Yes, I am. Doctor, what can we do about Terry? Frankly, I don't know. The boy must be taken care of. <laughs> he must be. <laughs> What's that? You'll pardon my intruding on your private conversation, gentlemen. Who are you? Where are you? I'm called the Shadow, gentlemen. Shadow? you heard of me, perhaps? Yes, uh, yes, yes, of course. You must know that although I stand here beside you, you cannot see me. By my hypnotic power, I've clouded your mind. Why are you here? I'm seeking information, gentlemen. Information about the death of that woman whose body lies on the table before you. Why, well, there is no information to give you. No? How did she die? We can't tell that until the coroner arrives. It couldn't have been murder, could it, Doctor? Murder? I don't know what you mean. Just before her death, did you by any chance hear music? Weird music and the sound of a cripple walking? No. No, we heard nothing. Why are you so anxious to get rid of young Terry Mason? Get rid of him? Yes. Now you say the boy must be taken care of? I... I didn't mean it that way. Those were your words, gentlemen. Just let me warn you. I'm very interested in the welfare of young Terry Mason. And if anything should happen to him, anything at all, gentlemen, I warn you. 
You will answer to the shadow. For many businessmen, few things in life add up to more pleasure than a good old fishing trip. There's that indescribable thrill you get when your wily game rises to the lure and strikes. There's the thrill of hauling him in. And later around the campfire as you fry the day's catch, there's the fun of telling your pals how the big one got away. Yes, fishing's a grand sport, and chances are you'll want to do more and more of it as the years roll on. Of course, more fishing means you'll need more leisure time, and more leisure time calls for money. The best way in the world to guarantee yourself money for any reason in the future is to save now through United States savings bonds. What a swell investment they are. It only takes ten years for each three dollars you invest to grow into four. Try and match that. Besides, United States savings bonds make it so easy to save. Just buy a bond yourself each payday at any bank or post office or get on the payroll savings plan. Either way, your money adds up fast and you hardly miss it. Folks, Back your future by saving now. For a happy tomorrow, save today. Buy and hold United States savings bonds. And now back to the shadow. Ready to leave, Shrevey. Hop in, darling. Oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Cranston, I ask you should ignore paying any attention to that taxi media should. Why, sweetie? Uh, the jack handle and I'm holding for my protection slipped and fell against it and ups to 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll ignore it all. Uh, right. I'm referring it, uh, or rather referring to it in my accounts as paper profits. Okay, sweetie. Yeah. Lamont, what'd you learn downstairs? Well, I went into that operating room and found that Terry's uncle and Dr. Norton were examining the corpse of the old woman who died. Do you think she was murdered? Well, I saw no evidence of violence. Both men swore she'd met a natural death. Then you think it was just Terry's imagination after all? No, I don't. It's hard to say at this point just what I do think. Well, do you still think that Terry might be right? Yes, I do. Well, then what do you propose to do? Well, I think I'm going to call on you for help, darling. Me help? How? Tomorrow I want you to go to Dr. Norton's office, pretend you're verging on a nervous breakdown, and gain admittance to the sanitarium as a patient. Well, all right, but how does one inquire a nervous breakdown? How? Just watch the cabbie take these turns. Uh, not a bad suggestion. No, seriously, Marco, I do this myself. Only Dr. Norton and Terry's uncle both know me. Now, what do you say? Well, sure, but... Sure, I'll do it. Good girl. You must see the doctor first thing tomorrow and gain admittance to the sanitarium no later than tomorrow night. <laughs> Are you quite comfortable, Miss Lane? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you, Nurse. Well, there's a cord right above your bed if you wish to ring. Yes, I know, I know. You told me that. Well, I'll just open your window and put out your light. There, now. Do try to get a good night's sleep. I'll try. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hmm. Try to get a good night's sleep. That's funny. Well, I can try. What's that? Work. The lights have been cut off. Somebody's coming in the door. Who is that? Why don't you answer me? Now don't come any closer because I'm. Shh! Quiet, Miss Lane. It's I, Terry. Oh, you frightened me. Sorry, but you must come with me to the cellar at once. The killer's loose again. Oh, Lamont, what are you doing here? I was outside keeping watch and I heard the scream. At first I thought it might have been you. No, I'm all right, thanks to Terry here. I think the murderer struck again. Yes, and just the way the Terry described. The weird music, the footsteps, and then the scream. Who was it this time? I don't know. But there was one unusual thing that Miss Lane didn't mention. The footsteps seemed to be coming down a staircase. And yet, there are no stairs in that wing of the house. Yes, I noticed that too. Anything else? Yes, there is. About 25 minutes ago, I heard the house phone ring. I listened in on the extension in my room, and I heard my uncle tell Dr. Norton that he'd be over here shortly. Yes, I saw his car drive in. Well, there's... Uh-oh. Someone next door in the operating room. 
It sounds like Uncle and Dr. Norton. I've sent the latest victim's body in there. Oh, Lamont, well, I... Terry, go back upstairs at once. We'll get back to your rooms before you're missed. Yes, yes that's right. Come on, Miss Lane. I'll be right with you, Terry. Okay. Lamont, what are you going to do now? The shadow's going to pay another call in the operating room and try to unravel this mystery. <laughs> See here, old man, I do think this thing has gone too far. Doctor, you promised me that we'd see this through together. I know, I know, but the second death is too much. <laughs> I should say that's understatement, Dr. Norton. Shadow again. Yes, gentlemen. And this time I shan't be as lenient with you. The body on that table should be examined by me, not you, Doctor. You fooled the police with your first murder, you do the same with this second one. Uh, are you accusing us of killing? I am. Hello, what's this? So, step over here, gentlemen. That's it. Now, examine that mark behind the patient's left ear. Look, doctor. He's right. That tricornered puncture was the cause of this woman's death. Then it was murder. So, you agree with me at last. But, but you don't think that we, that we killed her? I'm not sure yet. I want you both to go to Dr. Norton's study. And do not leave there until the shadow calls. <laughs> Are you alone, Margot? Yes, yes, Lamont. I'm coming right up to your room. The murder is about to strike again. Oh, no. Yes, darling. I have reason to believe that you've been selected as his next victim. Who is it? Sorry, Lamont. Open up. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad it's you. I thought you like Margot quickly. Well, yes, surely, but... We must have darkness. Oh, what's... not you... light from the moon. You'll see. I purposely called you on the house phone, Margot, because I knew the murderer would be listening in. And through his fear of my knowing his identity, he'll pick this time to try to kill us both. Oh, that's a pleasant little thought. But who is this murderer? If I'm not mistaken, it'll be a long, black, highly poisonous snake. He's a tricornered mark on his victim. A snake? Oh, gosh, Lamont, they scare me to death. Quiet, please, darling. The snake may be in the room now, ready to strike. We've got to listen for her. Look out, Lolo! I got him. Oh, man. I saw him come in through that window. I guess I closed it on him just in time. You cut his body in two. Yes. Well, that takes care of that. So that's our murderer. No, darling, only the instrument of death. Our murderer should be paying us a call in a moment to add the final macabre touch to what he expects has been a double killing this time. Listen. You hear that? Yes, it's the same sound. Yeah, we'll stand over here by the wall. It sounds again as if you were descending a flight of stairs. And yet there are no it's stairs. Notion. I don't speak. Watch that panel on the wall. You see? It's slowly opening. All right, then. Right. Oh, you got him! The last you got him! Yes, he'll play a different tune this time. Put on the light, Margaret. Right. Well, there's our murderer. Oh. Oh, that face. Those long fangs and those popping eyes. Doesn't look human. It isn't human, Margot. That's a mask. It's worn to hide his true identity. Now take it off. There. Well, Lamont, it's. Well, that just about ends my story. But you can see what a mess I almost got Lamont and Miss Lane into. Fortunately for them, they found out the murderer in time. This killer's motive was a familiar one, revenge, trying to implicate those he thought had wronged him. As you probably already deduced, the club foot was a disguise, and the weird music came from a strange oboe-like instrument that he used to hypnotize the snake. Oh, yes, he thought he was being very smart. But, uh, well, right on down the line, it's been pretty well proven that the smart guy in the long run gets just what he gives out. Time to go, Terry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't realize I was so long. I was just telling these people a story. Not a bad one, either, if I do say so myself. You'd better come along, Mason. Okay. 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 
every day, partly from the potentes who take care of it. For the acid in fact, the locus tours the habitat of one. Having been sentenced to die for committing the crime of murder, I hereby pronounce Terry Mason legally dead. Rome wasn't built in a day, as the saying goes. And neither is the wherewithal it takes to make your dreams about the future come true. That little farm on the edge of town. That really long vacation trip you've been promising yourself. If you're air-minded, one of those nifty little private planes that'll be coming along in a few years. Those and lots of other things don't just happen. You have to plan for them. Save up the money it takes to make them come true. It's a swell break, therefore, that you can go right on buying United States savings bonds. Government guaranteed and good interest rate. Make United States savings bonds your best bet to back your future. Actually, for each $3 you invest, you get back four in just ten years' time. Use the payroll savings plan or buy savings bonds yourself regularly at any bank or post office. Save today for a happy tomorrow by regularly buying and keeping United States savings bonds. And now the shadow again. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publication. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. <laughs> 